All right, everyone. Hello, hello. How are we doing today? Yes, we're doing well. Hello again. Welcome back. I'm Angus Reed, a sales engineer here at Insightly, and this is Patch. Hi, I'm an engineering manager at Insightly and the head of integrations. So we had a great response from all of you that tuned in about last month or so and uh, had a ton of fun doing this too, I think. It was uh, great to get in the hot seat here and um, <laughs> talk to some of you guys live and uh, we're looking forward to uh, doing it again. But um, we are back in action here on camera and uh, ready for episode two of Dev Talk. Yeah, so during our first episode, we described the different types of integrations and after all that feedback that came through, we wanted to, I guess, dig into a little uh, through our first part of the integrations, a small walkthrough, a little discovery, see where you can find them and when they install them, which areas of DCRM will you be able to access them from? Right. And one of the things that really stood out from uh, last episode is that we learned that a lot of you guys uh, wanted to learn more about those first party integrations yeah. and what we had to offer built in right inside of Insightly itself. So um, for today's second uh, episode, uh, we wanted to talk about that and discuss the power of those integrations with Insightly. Um, and uh, again, Patrick, remind us again of a little bit about that. Sure. So first party integrations is when Insightly connects to a third party app or to a different app and then gathers all that irrelevant data for you within Insightly and minimizes the complexity of the task that you are trying to accomplish. And so yeah. we want to try to keep you within the CRM and to accomplish all the tasks that you need and get all the information relevant to your contact or your opportunity. Got it. it. So first party integrations. First party. All right. So let's go back to um, the core thought of the CRM itself. Um, I like to sort of think of CRM as the wheel or the spoke of your bike, right? Mm -hmm. You've got the core of the business and then coming outside of that core are the various spokes, which could be perceived as the different integrations. Maybe it's an accounting package, maybe it's file storage, um, maybe it's marketing automation, right? Mm -hmm. So that's sort of um, the idea to keep here in mind. And these um, various integrations really uh, empower you uh, the ability to juggle a variety of tasks with inside of your CRM itself. All right, so for the first uh, and simplest uh, first party integration that we have uh, would be basic file storage, cloud storage. Yes. So whatever file sharing storage service that you use, we've got you covered. We've got a bunch of them. So if you use all four that we have, then you're just rocking out <laughs> and good for you. So the first one that we have um, is uh, Box, mm -hmm. um, awesome s service. Uh, another awesome one, Dropbox. And a lot of our users are uh, G Suite apps. So if you're into that, then Google Drive is a quick click right, right away. Um, and also Microsoft's OneDrive, powerful um, cloud storage. Yep. Um, all right, so let's pop into um, some of the file storage capabilities. All right, so anywhere you have the access to the files tab, you will be able to see the different options for cloud file pickers. So as you can see here, I went into a contact, I accessed the files tab, and now I can see all four cloud file pickers that Angus mentioned. Got it. So I guess let's start yeah, with... Let's uh, talk about linking. Oh, sure, yeah. So basically it's the file, it's the cloud file, right? So right. when I want to share a cloud file with you, uh, I want to, I'll just share the, the link with you, I'll copy the link and send it to you. Think of it in the same way when it comes to Insightly, right? So you are linking that virtually right. uh, stored file in into Dropbox or Box into Insightly. Got so it. it's when you click on it, you, we are actually taking you to that provider Right, right itself. into the file itself. Yeah. Got it. And then you might ask me, okay, so well, what if you link the file? Right. Well, how, what kind of access do I have to mm -hmm. it, right? Well, basically that's the provider's uh, security that sure. we, we implement here. So say I have an account with Insightly and I have maybe 100 users but I link a file from Google Drive into, let's say, an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, I have a whole team that has access to that opportunity itself. But what you're telling me is not everyone will be able to access the file, even though they see it. Even though they see it, when right. they click on it, it's still going to take them to Google Drive. Right? Okay. And so first thing I need to have is the ability to log into Google Drive. 
And not only that, after that, you can sell, right. you can set file sharing permissions okay. within Google Drive, correct? Right. So even though I might have access to Google Drive, I might not be able to see the file itself. So, okay, that makes sense. So you might want to call that like user level permissions, where we're linking the file, mm -hmm. but really you need to have access to see it. Okay, that makes sense to me. So one of the questions that I know um, a lot of people come to us about um, is, you know, okay, so if I link a file from a cloud storage uh, application into Insightly, does mm -hmm. that count against my record storage limit? So since it's a link, right? no, it does not. Oh, because we're great. not holding on to the file itself. We're so just helping We're link just it. linking that right. context files into, into whatever the, you know, the cloud Got storage it. file is. But mm -hmm. what if you ask, like, I want to hold on to this file. Like, I don't want to hold on to it in Google Drive or Dropbox. I want to hold on to it on Insight. Right. Right. We're like, okay, so download it from the yeah. cloud file and then use and the upload yeah, file option to add it to Insight, which mm -hmm. in, in turn we would upload it for you to AWS, to Amazon Web got Services. It. But that mm -hmm. is the case where your file storage limits are affected. Okay. Because this is a file now we're physically holding right. on to for you. And we're backing it and up. And we're backing it up. And right. so that acts against your file storage limit. Okay, that makes sense. And did we want to run through any more of the functionality there? Uh, sure, I will show just a simple linking of a cloud drive document. It, it, the, all the providers act the same way. They all have pickers where mm -hmm. you log into your account right. and then select the file and just link it. Got it. And so as you can see, we have multiple links here. The various cloud storage. The various cloud storage files. Uh, cool. let's, sorry, I need to move back. All right. All right. Well, that's good to know. Um, so we've taken a look at linking files, uh, adding the files, so almost uploading them from the cloud uh, service into Insightly itself. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's good to know. Yeah. Um, anything else on? Cloud I storage? will just go back since I think we weren't displaying the screen at first and there show that how we connected Google Drive, how we connected, uh, uploaded a file from our local storage, right. which acts against your record limits. Okay. And then this is an example of a OneDrive, Dropbox, cool. and so on and so forth. So we have a big list of files here, and it looks like we can filter them too. Actually, you can. You can filter by the files oh, that you uploaded, which act against your storage limit, and the files you linked, like Dropbox and Box and OneDrive, Got it. and so on and so forth. Cool. So do we have any questions out there from the audience uh, about cloud storage in Insightly? Or up Uploading files, anything like that? I think, let's see. OK, we have a. That one's for a little later. Zero data. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. Um, I know that uh, one of the things that comes up quite frequently on my side, on the sales team, you know, people have the app and they, they're out in the field and um, they're taking a look, you know, let's say at like a site where they need to evaluate something and the team needs to get a hold of that file. They can actually take a picture from the phone and upload it into the file section too. Yes, yeah. of course they can. And, yeah. But that is a file that you saved on our end that right. will act against you. So that goes against your file storage limits. That goes your file storage limits. Cool. Uh, let's just stuff the on the toward the end. There. Okay. So all right. So let's, let's take a look at something new um, that we just brought into inside yes. here. Uh, let's talk yeah. about Slack. So Slack. Slack is a great messaging service. Yes. Uh, we're big fans of it here at Insightly. Not only do we use it across the entire organization, but it's a massive uh, asset as well for the sales team. Um, we've been able to configure our, um, our assistant um, for Slackbot mm -hmm. through the help of Patch here um, to do all sorts of fun things with our opportunities and leads um, on our side too, uh, coming from the sales team. So we can search that information uh, when a deal closes, we all get notified, and we can, we can all send some gifts and celebrate. So, um, Patrick, let's chat about the new Insightly yeah. Assistant. A little, I guess, background context yeah. on what yeah. a chatbot and Insightly Assistant is. So, I'm sure like almost everyone has heard that it's a trending subject, chatbots and assistants that do work on your behalf, making it less complex for you to accomplish anything. Right. And so we wanted to take a jab at that, uh, but. We really, there are really a few technical aspects to it that we're unfamiliar with. Sure. Uh, so we've, our first attempt was during a hack week when we started developing the bot. 
Mm -hmm. But what we were using is just a command line tool, right. which means that you need to memorize the command that you are sending to that bot. So if right. I wanted to find a contact, I need to be able to remember that, okay, I need to say find first, I need to say contact second, and right. I need to put between two quotes, Got for it. example, the contact name. Right, right. So it was a great attempt. The chat mm -hmm. bot uh, is nice to work with, but not really a great user experience. And so in our second attempt, mm -hmm. we started experimenting with natural language understanding. Okay. All right, hold up. Natural <laughs> language, what's going on here? Tell me yeah. about that. So natural language understanding in its simplest explanation right. is giving a machine the ability to learn human language, okay. basically. But machines don't work like our brains. They need patterns, they need structures. Sure. So I don't want to go deep into the conversation, but what the takeaway from this is mm -hmm. that chatbots can understand intent. Okay. What is an intent? An intent is that when I tell the bot, mm -hmm. add a contact for me, or create a contact for me, or make a contact for me, sure. the bot understands that the intent of it right. is to add so a new object. To, to humanize it. Exactly. And bring that element into the actual so, AI. Okay, perfect. So uh, the intent here is, okay, I want to add something, mm -hmm. create something. However, I still said that right. to the bot. Okay, what do you want to add? Then comes the entity, and okay. which I'm saying contact. All right. So with natural language understanding, I can say make Angus in contacts or add right. Angus to contacts, and it sure. will still understand that the intent and the entity. Go all right, all right, enough. Of that. Let's take <laughs> so, a look at this. Uh, let's gonna, take a look at okay, this. Let's assistant. just go right. into. It a all right, bit let's more. pop in there. All right. So the one uh, the one problem that we've seen is that some of our users get confused around installing the bot, which is very understandable because. Well, it's a new thing to us and to them. So we, we're all trying to learn how to use this. All right. So go into first things plot, first plot. is that I'm going to go into the integrations tab. Let's, Let's pop see back that. in. And I'm going to go to the Insightly Assistant there we go. for Slack. So this is where we install it from. Okay. There are two aspects to the bot that we need to keep in mind. The first one is querying the bot, is when I ask it to do something on my behalf. The second part is asking the bot to notify me through Slack when some event happens, like an opportunity is one, which mm -hmm. is something you right. mentioned earlier. So I'm going to start by simply just adding a channel to Slack. So I'm going to open up Slack. I'm going to go into our demo Ooh, account. You can see a live. Yeah. And then. I'm going to add a simple channel to Slack. Okay. This is taking long. Takes a little bit of time to authenticate. We're uh, moving a lot of data right now through that computer, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In the meantime, while well, Slack decides to load, yep. We are going to. Okay. So back to Slack. I'm going to add a channel We're called good to go. Assistant Two. <clears throat> System two. And then I'm going to add another channel for notifications, and I'm going to call it opportunity one, for example. Great. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to Slack. So this is my Slack team. We've got a it's lot of going teams. to ask me. Well, we had to do a lot of testing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, connection is. As you're connecting this, how is it working with the Slack team making this? Was it a fun process? It was a fun process because I, we were part of their uh, launch, enterprise launch, and so right. we worked uh, with them okay. to uh, complete the bot and launch it through their enterprise offering, which wow. was a lot of fun. They gave us a lot of help. Sure. And so, uh, yeah, we, we got a lot of help from Slack people on like how, what are the best things, what are the pitfalls, uh, what kind of problems users are experiencing with right. chatbots. They, they have a lot of exposure to that. Given sure. that they, you know, right, exactly. They have their stuff. So, All right, you ready to go? Uh, this is All right. so let's say we've added insightly assistant one. Yep, my slide doesn't want to work. The first thing I'm going to be able to see is that Okay, so now we've got the... Uh... Yeah, Slack is taking its time to load. Oh, great, great. There you go. Okay, so, so we're going to go to the channel we just added, and we're going to authorize that. Here we go. 
Authorizing the skip ahead forward so that yeah. I don't wait. We have the assistant one ready to go. Yeah, we, we have an yeah, assistant one channel one. where it the first thing that the bot will do is that <clears throat> it will introduce itself that, OK, I'm here. You right. added me to this channel. Got Great. It. But the problem here is that the assistant doesn't know which Slack user okay. correlates to which insight the user. Got it. So the second thing I want to do is log in so that it knows that my Slack user relates to my insight the user so sure. that when I ask it to query stuff, it knows where it's going. Okay. So where do I get my, I go to my user settings, I go get my API key. Yep. Copy that. So there's a little, uh, and we've got a, an entire tutorial on this too. Yes, we right? do. Yeah, yes, so we, we can do. always send that out yeah. afterwards. We log in and then we move on. All right. Let's yep. do a simple find. All right. So we're going to use that natural language. Yeah. Find Let's a contact named Aaron. Guy we found, Aaron Rod. Yeah, we've, or search, uh, we can search that. Yeah. Okay. So I did a find. Contact Aaron Rod. Looks like you've got two assistants. You have too many yeah. assistants. You're a busy guy. I am. The first thing I'm going to see is that it found the contact Aaron. Great. Great. There it is. Perfect. So then what we could do is click on Aaron, visit that information inside the CRM. Um, we can also locate um, opportunities or mm -hmm. leads. So we can find leads now. We can right. find contacts and we can find opportunities. Right. And we can do some follow-up on that by adding a note to contact, mm -hmm. updating an opportunity cool. state. So these are the five, six commands that we actually right. just released it with, just yeah. to test it out and see where to take it from here. And we're constantly expanding on that, correct? Yes. We are. We are. Okay. The That's second great. piece to it is the notifications. Basically, when I add a channel, go ahead. I, am, I have the ability to say now, okay, great. So push all opportunity one notifications to inside the assistant one. And then anything that is over a hundred dollar threshold, I want to know about it. Perfect. So then nice. I can go to Slack. And now we've configured that and notification. I can show the notification one opportunity notification Got it. one. Very nice. You can do that with leads. Mm -hmm. You can do that with import export complete and a couple of notifications. We hope to bring you a lot more notification types that you can push to. Got it. Slack. All right. So it looks like we've got a few questions in the house. Um, you ready for that? Yes, I am. All right. So we have cloud referrals. Can you show us what it looks like when you create a contact from Slack? Yes. Sure. Okay, let's do that. Ah, my Slack, my connectivity is having issues, but now did we? Were we? We received some sort of recognition for um, our CRM capabilities within Slack. Wasn't there something there that Slack had told us? I can't remember exactly what that was. It's the number one AI bot or something. Yeah. Cool. All right, so let's create a contact from Slack. All right, what is, let's delete that. All right, so. Do, do, do. Too many. You have too many channels. I have too many channels and I forgot what I installed it on. What's it? Is it here? Yeah. Let's see. So. Well, Patrick works on that. I'm going to keep <laughs> chatting with you guys. Yes. Um, it seems like we had a, n a couple other questions come through. A question from Alex. Uh, when will we be able to do things like create opportunities and updating pipeline stages? So in terms of updating the pipeline stages, that is on our radar. Um, we are, um, let's see here. Sorry, I meant to click that. Um, so in terms of going back to updating the pipeline stages question, um, that is something on our radar, and we definitely uh, want to bring that into the functionality. So um, that is on the roadmap. Uh, in terms of creating that, the opportunities, can we create opportunities yet? From not yet, yeah, but not, that not, is yeah. the next intent that yeah. we are going. We are trying to add. So, so we've we've played around with contacts, leads, leads 
and getting opportunities. Right. The next would be uh, creating an opportunity sure. and then following that up with, okay, let's say find this opportunity and update the stage. Right. Currently, what you can do is find the opportunity and update the status of which. Okay. And I apologize, but my Slack is having a lot of issues. Uh oh. And loading, so I'm well, going to have to. That's fine. Um, skip the tried, conversation. I will. We, we will get back to this. Yeah. yeah well, until okay. Slack decides to respond to me. You can work on that for the time being. Cool. All right. So we'll come back to that in a minute here. Um, one of the next part of um, what we want to talk about here would be. Um, QuickBooks and Zero. So um, every company has to track their income. It's mission critical. Um, being able to understand what's going on in terms of the financial side of your organization mm -hmm. is um, massive, right? So what we need to know uh, from these integrations is, you know, what sort of information can we see in Insightly? Uh, are we pulling any information in? Are we moving it out? Are we just looking at it? Um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about you know, from your perspective, what's happening there? I can. So accounting software, sensitive information, financial right. data. So we want to find that dividing line then mm -hmm. so that we can get you that relevant data, right. act on your behalf, but mm -hmm. to a certain limit. Got it. So the first thing we want to do with financial software is just show you a snapshot of the information right. that you, uh, that whatever you link to, whatever contact you link to. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you're going to say, what about writing to that accounting software? Right. In our integrations, we do that. We do zero in QuickBooks where you can create a contact sure. and create a draft okay. invoice. Right. So the ability to create a contact is an obvious use case. You want to be able to create a, a contact automatically in zero and upload that information from Insightly to mm -hmm. zero, right? right, without having to enter it again. Right. That's a simple use case. Just linking that information. Linking that information. The right. second piece of it, okay, I have a contact that's linked. Well, I want to be able to create an invoice on the fly. Of course, that is mm -hmm. a draft invoice that you're going to have to follow up with when you log into Zero right. or uh, whoever is down that, uh, you know, that process that needs mm -hmm. to approve it and add to right. it. You will have to eventually continue that invoice in Zero. But at least the first step of creating that draft is mm -hmm. done for you through Insight. Right. And these are the only two writing options that we do other than, of course, mm -hmm. merging contact information to contact information and vice versa. Right. So now that we've um, chatted about sort of how that works and functions, let's let's take a look at it. Yeah. And um, let's see how easy it is to uh, to link some of those contacts and, and what information we provide. So um, we do have two um, accounting package integrations, yes. which are Xero, uh, also Australian company, also uh, Australian and company. QuickBooks. Um, and let's uh, take a look at the Zero integration that we have. Sure. So I already have Zero installed, but the process is uh, also described in our support articles where you install, log in, and then uh, you're all good. So, okay, so I've installed Zero. Where can I see it? There are four entities where you can see Zero from. First being contacts. We are having some uh, activity issues. I um, apologize for that. Okay, I'm going to go into contact. And as you can see here, my zero tab has showed up. Right. So we've got this guy, Aaron Rod. Great. Good looking dude. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we already linked uh, his zero contact in. So I'll probably just go and unlink it right. just to show what happens here. So right. what's happening here is is that the integration is actually trying to match the contact name to whatever it. it can find in zero. And so it actually, it's basing it off email, right? It based it off email and off of the name. Got it. And then so it gets the relevant search results. And of course, Aaron Rod is here. There he is. And I can add the link without really having to. So, so sure. the two systems uh, connect to each other and they say, all right, we've got Aaron Rod in this system, Aaron Rod in, let's say, zero. And now we want to suggest that connection. And then that's what you just saw there. Yeah. We link it together. And then if we have inside zero some outstanding balances or uh, invoices, then we can actually display that information right here. We can. Right. And there is a point that I'd like to make here when it comes to invoices and bills mm -hmm. is that we calculate a certain information. So we okay. can only calculate approved bills. Got it. So if you can switch back and we can take a look at the two invoices we have here. And we can, you can see that one is authorized and the other is draft. And so the information, the numbers here only reflect 
the approved one, right? And we've added a nice piece of information that actually came from user feedback. So when we were building this, we actually went through some user interviews in which uh, our, some of our customers that were using Insight and Zero in parallel. And so we talked to them, what do you'd like to see about this integration? Got it. And uh, one great idea that came out from that is that, okay, I would like to see a customer value overall sure. and over the last year. Right. And so that is a calculation that we made on our end based on the outstanding bills and invoices and, Got it. and the overdue ones. And so that's why you can see that this is, yeah. his lifetime value is $65 just because he has one approved account. Got it. So now you learned some accounting when you I, put this together, didn't you? I did, although right. funny, I, I actually failed accounting oh. in school. Accounts receivable or payable? <laughs> I have no idea, <laughs> but I learned those. I learned That's what great. accounts receivable are, learned awesome. what accounts payable are. It, uh, it took a bit, but right. we learned how to integrate with financial software. And, and like, how did, how did this kind of come about? I mean, what, uh, did we have clients reaching out saying, hey, you know, we have, you know, our accounting packages, we're trying to sort of sync the two together. What was yeah. the sort this of more? This is actually a great example of one of uh, the integrations that came from customer community right. feedback and asking for it. Sure. Now, of course, it's a Australian company that gave them a bump up, but still we had a lot of customers ask for it. And right. we're like, okay, so how can we integrate financial software mm -hmm. into a CRM? Right. And so we went by studying their APIs. We went about interviewing customers that used those software that asked for it and what they would like to see. And sure. slowly and surely a spec came out and right. we built it. There it now, goes. Yeah, there's a lot, there's this stuff that's missing, stuff that our people are still asking for, mm -hmm. customers still asking for, as with every integration, of course. Right. And so we try as much as possible to update them and add those features sure. when they're asked for. Well, I know, especially on the sales side here at Insightly, um, we have a good number of clients that ask about this integration and what sort of integrations we can do uh, in the capabilities as well. So um, again, you know, being that spoke uh, or the hub of your business itself, passing that information from one place to the next um, is what we really uh, wanted to accomplish here with the accounting integration. Let's so, take a look at yeah, any questions the on questions. this? Let's see. Um, all right. Uh, it doesn't seem like we have too many specific questions on. There is one about, one about purchase, purchase history. history. I want to see purchase history okay. for my accounting software with my CRM information. That, yes, yes. that is great. But okay. the problem we have, the limitations, not a problem. The limitations we have is that we use that, uh, that third party's API. So right. we use Zero's API. Mm -hmm. So one of those things that, uh, that one of those questions that I mentioned here, like uh, purchasing history and right. quotes. Quotes is a big thing that mm -hmm. people ask for, customers right. ask for. But unfortunately, we don't have any exposure to the API to get to retrieve that information or add that information. So mm -hmm. what we can do is limited, but what a zero, for example, is API. Right. So, so, so the limitations of the integration on our side are based on the limitations of the, API. the partner's API, exactly. right? Yes. So whatever they allow us to do, or have access to, that's the functionality of which we're able to build and integrate on, yes. correct? Yes. Right. And that, as I mentioned, the big feature that's being asked for to add to zero integration right. is quotes. Okay. We have that in QuickBooks and mm -hmm. estimates in QuickBooks, and that right. that is because they afforded it to the API. Mm -hmm. And so zero has promised us that they are working on adding that, and okay. as soon as they do, that's good. of course, we'll enable it. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, Let's see, workaround, do we have a workaround for that? Not that I yeah. can think of at the moment. Yeah, um, but if we could think of something, I'll make sure. Yeah. Export to Excel, Power BI? Um, no. no. Let's see that, maybe maybe on on, on that side, maybe on the zero. In the zero side. QuickBooks side, yeah. um, hopefully they would have that option because right. they have that data there. We sure. we basically read that data. And there was a question earlier about how can we can add that to our advanced reporting, right. tool, which is actually a great idea that we are, we'll look into and are yeah. looking into. 
to add that information, but it's also limited by the amount of information we have access right. to. So, yeah. I mean, the, the whole idea of this integration is the ability to have the perspective of almost a window into the accounting package from Insightly, yeah. right? So as your various teams, let's say you have a, a finance team or accounting team that's working inside of Insightly as well, they can pop in there, take a look at that invoice real quick, find out what's been paid, what hasn't been paid, and any other relevant information there. So that's sort of the um, idea and perspective is to keep your entire teams engaged with inside the CRM and provided that information. Yes. So, um, all right. So we've taken a look at some questions in the accounting um, things. You want to move into the next one? Uh, let's see it through. Maybe there is anything else. There is all a right. MailChimp question that we will get cool. to. Yeah. Yeah. So MailChimp um, marketing automation. Um, so this is obviously a huge need for businesses. Huge. Um, you know, sending emails out and, and keeping in touch with people or, or um, updating uh, on orders or whatever it may be, just being able to stay in touch with um, your various clients is, is something that we've tried to uh, create this integration around. So um, having a, the ability to sync the information from Insightly into MailChimp was the key focus here. Um, so let's talk about importing leads. Yeah. Should we uh, so we hop going, into the yes. MailChimp? As with every integration, you have the ability to install MailChimp by using the MailChimp API key. Got it. So we've got this all set up. We've got this all set up. The first thing I would like to show is that just an individual subscriber. Right. right? OK, what if I want to link an individual subscriber mm -hmm. in MailChimp, like the concept of Zero and QuickBooks when you're linking contacts to right. a contact? So we have an Aaron Rod here. This connectivity is well that computer's doing a lot, so yeah, probably. All right. So as with every integration, you'll be able to see the integration tab with right. the relevant icon, and then you'll be able to see MailChimp. So this is there is a subscriber that exists in one of the lists in MailChimp that mm -hmm. relates to Aaron Rod. Right. It's like the hangout's not. My, too much. There yeah, we go. Okay. My internet connection. So dropping. similar idea here. Um, what's happening is we're taking Aaron Rod, we're taking his email address, and we're looking inside of, of MailChimp and we're trying to find that connection. So when we do, we're able to take a look at the various MailChimp lists on the right uh, that drop down. Um, we can take a look at the various campaigns. Um, you know, what was the open rate? What was the click rate? Um, did they click on any link inside the email? So we're taking that functionality that exists with inside of MailChimp and bringing that to you here with inside of the auto, the uh, marketing automation um, integration. Um, so back to some of the other topics here. So we, we, we have the ability to link a subscriber. So now we link the subscriber. That's all good. But how do I get that information from MailChimp right. to start with? So. We have the ability, so MailChimp is an integration that is open for leads and contacts, right. applies to leads and contacts. So mm -hmm. naturally, I want to be able to import into my contacts and leads, and right. I want to be able to export from my contacts and leads. Got it. But not only that, maybe I want to schedule an import, okay. just have it on a recurring basis. Sure. And just from this list, every time, every day, just pull in that information. Right. Let's start with just importing a contact. Okay. Basically, through everywhere we import contacts from, you have all these options here, and there you go. Import contacts, import contacts from, MailChimp. from MailChimp. Got it. That's pretty handy. And so the first thing that I would see is that all the lists I have in MailChimp. Take a look at that. So this was in the contacts yes. page. We clicked on import. And now we have the option to import from MailChimp. So I select the list. Right. And because my connectivity is having a problem, I'm not going to go through clicking import. Apparently, right. yeah. this is, yeah. That's fine. Um, so once I select the list, I have the ability to map the fields uh -huh. and then just import it in. The Got same it. way with exporting a list right. of contacts from okay. Insightly. Sorry. You have to do it inside the contacts. Yeah. You have to so select. Let's go back into someone that wouldn't be in Insightly. You'd have the. Option under actions to export to MailChimp. Yeah. Export it to MailChimp. There we go. Okay. Um, 
what about importing leads? Importing including leads. Including list assignments. Yes, that import, import, has an interesting feature. Importing leads according to lead assignment. Right. So importing leads from MailChimp, selecting a list like within contacts. Okay. But the difference here is that I can see my lead assignment rules. Ooh. I can apply any existing lead assignment rules and say otherwise. Right assign this lead to this person. So let's chat about lead assignment rules just in case you don't have that set up on your side with inside of your CRM. A lead assignment rules give you the ability to um, almost filter the uh, leads based on a set of criteria. So if you wanted to, let's say, serve any leads coming in from California to a California sales team or maybe an international lead um, to your international sales teams, that's what that functionality allows yeah. you to do, right? Yes. Anything else correct. on that? Uh, no, that's about the time we have for MailChimp. I'd like to Great. check out the questions. Check out the questions. Email marketing metrics within my CRM. Right now, we can only see the individual profile. That's correct. Can we report on both data sets? That's another good question. So basically, the theme that that, that I'm understanding here is that we. You'd like to see more of that information generated within our advanced reporting. Right. When it comes to the zero integration, QuickBooks integration, MailChimp integration, which is a great idea, an mm -hmm. idea that we have uh, been thinking about. Right. So we want to bring that those integrations and the information that we provide into our advanced reporting. So cloud referrals, as soon as anything like that happens, we will make sure to <laughs> let you know. We'll keep you updated for sure. Um, okay. All right, so any other questions on MailChimp? If not, let's see. All right, so that is definitely on the map. We've confirmed. Yeah. So that's good. Yes, it is. All right, well, this, what, this sort of concludes the end of our second episode of DevTalk. So thank you all for tuning in. Yes, thank you. And I hope this was helpful just as a discovery of what kind of first party integrations we offer and some of the places you can find it with. In. But uh, eventually, we have great support articles. We have great right. tutorial videos that you can always uh, go to for a more in-depth detail sure. about those integrations. And as always, on our community, we are happy to answer any questions that you have and yep. add any requests that you vote on for additional features. What we want to talk about here. Yeah, or what we want to talk about here, too. And so just quickly wrapping up, you want to talk about how, how that went today. So we have, in terms of the levels of first party integrations, we have the ability to share the information. Yes. The ability pulled in. Yep. The ability to read the information virtually, which yep. is in the case of Cloud Cloud Pickers, you're right. just sharing a link with me that I'm mm -hmm. tying into your contact. Right. The ability to pull in and read data, mm -hmm. like within zero, and so that I can serve you with a snapshot of information of that right. certain account. And then the ability to write data with a lot of I guess, uh, like concern for just making sure that we do not overstep right. our privileges when it comes to integration. Right, exactly. And so, especially when it comes to financial software, we want to make sure that we are not creating anything, uh, in sen uh, sensitive, or any sensitive data on your behalf. That's right. Awesome. Well, thank you again for your time today. Yes. And uh, we look forward to having you Tune in, tune in with us uh, for episode three. Yes, and please try to set up uh, one of those integrations. We are very like to know what you think of that. Thank right. you very much. Bye-bye.